Okay, so someone was requesting how to have a character make a 90 degree turn in an endless runner. Now, I already have an endless runner tutorial. I'll put a link in the description. This is going to address just that one issue. So rather than starting from scratch, I'm just going to like quickly assemble uh, the basics of an endless runner and we'll show you how to add that functionality. So the very basics is that you have um, a path of some kind. So we're going to go to game object, 3D object, and we'll go to plane. We're going to center this on the camera. And let's just make this bigger. Let's click on the camera, can see what it looks like. So let's drop this to negative one. Uh, make the Z like eight. Should be more than plenty. Okay, can shrink the X scale a little bit. Doesn't have to be quite that wide. And then we'll just copy this, paste this, rotate it, negative 90. And that way we have a path that can be turned on to. Okay, so the basics of how a endless runner works is you have a path and you have a camera, which is the point of view of the player. And then you have the actual avatar for the player in the screen as well. That camera and that avatar have to move in tandem they have to move at the same rate if the camera moves too fast the character um the avatar will fall behind out of the view of the camera if the avatar is moving too fast it'll go out into the distance so you need the camera and the avatar to move at the same rate there's a couple ways to do this for simplicity i'm just going to link them it's possible in your game you may de-link them and i'll also explain how you can do that so when you import, whether it be um, a, a, a 3D model or a, um, or a 2D image, okay, you import it into your asset area. If it's a 2D image, it usually defaults to texture. Make sure you change it to a sprite and make sure that the pixels per unit start off as 100. You don't want this number to become really small, really big, because you'll skew their appearance. Now, in this case, I am going to have to make the character smaller. I just want to point that out. So it starts off as a texture, turn it to a sprite, and then you'll be uh, ready to go. So let's take that image. So we'll go to create object. This time will be a 2D object. We'll choose sprite, and we'll just drag and drop that image Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this also in the center. And it's going to be way, way too big. So let's make this like 0.2 and 0.2 for the X and the Y. Move it much, much closer to the camera. The camera is at a negative 10 Z. Let's put this at like a negative seven and see how that looks. So it looks like they're, makes them look like they're really far away. Let's zoom in. Take that image. And there she can be lowered. About there. See how that looks now. Can't be seen. There we go. Now it's important using this method that she is very close to the camera, that the avatar is very close to the camera. It's all the way up at point, uh, 
excuse me, negative 7.78. So it's only 2.22 units away. Because what's going to happen is when the camera rotates, she will also rotate her rotation since she's going to be linked to the camera. The camera will be her pivot point. In other words, she's going to rotate around the camera. So if she's way out here, she's going to rotate way out around here. She needs to be really close to the camera. So let's take her, link her to the main camera. And so now when the camera moves, she moves. So right click, create, C sharp script, and let's just call this move. This is how we're going to move the camera. And by moving the camera, it also moves her because she is now a child. That's what, that's the reason why you make a child, uh, uh, or that's one of the reasons why you make one object a child to another. Is that way if you move or you rotate the camera, same thing happens to the child. It inherits those um, changes. So let's click on the camera. We'll click on add component. We'll click on physics and we'll click on rigid body and we get rid of gravity. So what rigid body does is that would suggest is it allows for gravity. It allows for physics. So now we can add velocity to the camera. And when we move the camera, it inherently moves her because she is a child. So let's create our three variables. We'll open that up. It's going to be public. public float x val short for x velocity and I'll start off as zero public float y val so y velocity public float z val So those are going to be the velocity variables for the camera. Because as I said, the way a, 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 an illustrator works is it's simply the camera and the character moving along an axis. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we now need to check for if a key is pressed. So if input dot get key down we're using get key down that way it's not rapid fire get key down is true for one frame and one frame only and that's the first frame that the key is pressed so we're going to look for the letter a we're using wasd controls so what happens when you press a we want them to rotate left onto that path so how do we do that well we need two things to happen a we need to change the velocity of the um, camera and we need to change the rotation of the camera. So rather than facing forward and moving forward, it's going to rotate left. Technically, it's still moving forward, but it's moving forward along a different axis. OK, so what we're going to do is before we proceed with that. Let's do this. Get component. Rigid body, so as we said, the rigid bodies for the movement dot velocity equals new vector three, and we're going to put in those three variables x val, y val, z val. Now this one start as a zero. We're going to set it to five. We'll just come out here and make sure the change applies. We'll click on the camera. All right, we didn't apply the script yet, so we'll drag and drop the script onto the camera. Expand this, and there we go. We've got our velocities. So let's run it like this, actually. I don't think this will create a problem even though there's nothing in there because we did section it off with the brackets. There you go. It's slow, but as you can see, we are moving along the path. So now we just need to rotate. 
So we need to change the z velocity to 0. We need to make the x velocity equal to 5. But we need something else to happen. We need to rotate the camera. So get component. Again, we're going to use the rigid body. But now we're going to do what's known as angular velocity. And that is your, so regular velocity is movement in a direction. Angular, angular velocity, for want of a better term, is just rotation. But it's constant rotation. So we want it to rotate left. So we'll have it rotate on the y-axis, negative 2. And you might have to tweak this depending on the speed of your computer. OK, so the thing to know about angular velocity is once you apply it, it's constant. It keeps doing that. OK, so that means we need to stop it. So after a certain amount of time, we want it to stop. So what we're going to do is going to create a coroutine. So start coroutine. And it's not going to recognize the name because we haven't written it yet, but we're about to. So start coroutine. We're going to call it stop rotation. See, it doesn't recognize it. It's in red. That's because we haven't made it yet. So outside of update, I enumerator. Stop rotation. We need to spell it exactly the same way or else it won't recognize it. See? It turned black. It now recognizes it. So basically what we're going to do in here is we're going to tell this to wait and then make a change. So uh, return, uh, yield return new. And it's going to be wait for seconds. And let's try eight tenths of a second. Got to drop in the letter F since it's a decimal. So this applies a rotation negative two, which is constant. It keeps doing that. It's not a one off. Just like, well, actually, the velocity does get applied every update, uh, every frame, whereas this only happens once. So it gets applied and then it keeps applying it. So uh, it's rotating it in a negative direction. Then it says, OK, go out to this coroutine. In this coroutine, it says wait for 8 tenths of a second. So in other words, it's going to keep doing that and then do something. Well, we're going to take the same line just because I feel like being lazy and I want to avoid typing. And we set it to 0. It's like, OK, you've rotated for 8 tenths of a second. Now stop. But to make sure that you're perfectly rotated, you're then going to do this. Going to go transform Euler angles. And what this does is this sets an absolute rotation. We want it to be 0, negative 90, 0. And that gets us just about where we want to be. So if the, if the A key is pressed, Velocity changes from being on along z to along x. Rotation gets applied. Eight tenths of a later, tenths of a second later, it stops. Aligns it here just to make sure it's properly aligned. And every frame, it's applying the velocity. I think that's everything we need. Oops. So they were moving backwards. Reason for that is moving that direction is negative. Moving that direction is positive. I did a positive rather than a negative. So this should have been negative. And now this should work.
Now, clearly, there's still a lot of work that would need to be done. Like, for instance, right now she can go off the road. You would need to put in an additional check to make sure that she's not able to move until there. So there's a couple ways to do it. You could put a collider box in there, and you would check not just for the A key. You would check for the A key, and you would check to see if they are colliding. Um, you could also just check the range, that if they're within a certain uh, location, then uh, do it. So that would be an easy one. So let's take a quick look to see what Z would have to be. So I just moved it forward, and it looks like Z would be somewhere around 23. So it's going to make this look a little bit messy, but... And get component transform dot position dot z is greater than twenty three. Let's see if it accepts that. Okay, so I'm going to hit the A key. Nothing's happening. Now I hit the A key, and now it lets her rotate. So just like that, you can put the control in from having to go off the rails. Now this is a one-sided um, range. So it's really not a range. Well, it's a range, but it's only greater than. You'd also want to put in one more that says and less than. So it's uh, a Z is greater than 23, but Z is also less than, say, 30. That way, once she goes past the path, she once again can't turn. So again, if you want to see a uh, endless runner from scratch, I'll put the uh, link in the description. This is basically just showing how to uh, make this work for um, for this one functionality, and that is doing a harsh turn. I hadn't done that in my original demo, but there are indeed uh, endless runner games where you can do that. Uh, so the, that should do about do it.